step-by-step -step instructions to create a AWS Lambda function that can be used to start or stop an EC2 instance on AWS. Also, how to create a IAM policies with these respective limited permissions so that AWS Lambda can be used or function can be used to stop a particular EC2 instance or restart or stop or start at a particular time. This is what we are going to cover in this video. Now, to give you some context, AWS Lambda can be used for multiple functions, multiple purposes, but this is what we are going to show it to you here. And once you know and understand, then you can play and create your own additional functions or lambdas, Lambda functions as well for you. Now, just to give you context or to give you some background, the video that you're going to see is actually taken from our AWS job oriented live instructor training. So I'm going to bring that expert and she's going to show you how to do that as well. Now, if you're new to AWS, after watching this video, there is a subsequent previous video prior to that where we covered what is AWS Lambda, what are some of the common use cases, limitations, and what in simple terms AWS Lambda means, go and watch that as well. Now, after doing this, watching this video, make sure you go and implement that because that's how you're going to learn. So how to create, uh, how to use that, what are the step by instructions I'm going to cover towards end so that you can come back and or continue watching that and towards end I'm going to show you. So without spending any further time, let's look at and see how to use or how to create that function and play with that. So here's that instructions for you. So let's do the practical of Lambda here. So I will write Lambda in the search bar. So you can see that a page will appear where you can actually create a function. So let's build up a scenario. The one which I said that I want to restart the servers at a certain time. That kind of Lambda function, let's do that. So I will create two EC2 instances or one EC2 instance which I want to restart. So let me launch a server. So I'm just launching a test server. So don't worry about where in which VPC the server is being launched. What is the AMI? What is the instance type? Which key pair we are using because we are not going to get connected to it. I just want a server for the purpose of having an instance ID. So what will I do is I will create a Lambda function to restart this server at a certain schedule. So how can I do that? I need to first, you know, let me take the whiteboard. I need to first have the EC2 instances on which I want to work so that I have already launched and then I will create the function. So this function is basically to restart the EC2 instance. But this function should have the permission also na, to restart the EC2 instance. Anybody can come and re restart my EC2 instance. That is not possible. If I have this EC2 instance, there should be certain permission set which should be assigned to my this lambda function so that this lambda function is able to execute the restart operation on my EC2 instance. So over here, I will create a role which will have permission to restart the EC2 instances. So let me create the role first. The role which we are required to create. This is my test instance. I will share you this link also, the one which I am using for this practical. This is from Amazon only, not any other website. So over here, you need to first write a role which will have these permissions. Now, what does these permissions are saying? Let me explain you first on the notepad. Now, because you know how to read the policy. 
So you will be able to understand this code which is written. So you are basically creating a policy where the effect is allowed. You are allowing something. The effect is allowed. And the effect is allowed. And what are you allowing? You are allowing to start and stop EC2 instances. So any service which is beginning from start and stop, whatever is there after start and stop, so start instance, stop instance. These are the two services that you are allowing. On which resources? On every resource that you have. So you could even mention the instance IDs over here or otherwise you can allow it for all. And also you are allowing to create logs for this action which is performed. You are allowing the logs to be created. Such role is getting created by you. Okay. So let's take this code from here. So uh, what will I do is the first thing that I will do is I will create a role. How can we create a role? We are required to go an identity and access management page. Let me open it up in the new tab. And over here, I will create roles. By clicking on roles, I will click on create role. So it will ask me, you are creating the role for whom? I said I'm creating a role for an AWS service. Which service? Lambda service. This role will be used by Lambda. Next. What permissions do I want to give? So there is no default permission which is written over here. I actually need to create a new permission set. It is a custom policy that I want to define over here. So what will I do? I will again open the IAM page in the new tab where I will go to the policies and I will create a policy for myself. The policy with the appropriate permissions. I'll open the JSON tab. I will delete all what is written and we will paste what we have got copied. So it is giving me permission to start and stop the EC2 instances and create the logs. These are the permissions which we have created. This is the role permissions that we are creating. I'll click on next. I will write the name of the policy. Uh, we can write as Lambda role policy. And I'll create the one. Then I will come back to my page where I was creating the role, which I was where I was supposed to get the permissions added. I will refresh the page and I will search for Lambda role policy. See the one which I created. I will select these permissions. I will create the role as lamb role. And I will create this role. So my role got created. The first task has been done. And then I will now create the lambda function. So on the lambda function page, I will come and click on create function. I'll say that <clears throat> I want to create a function from scratch. And the code for my function is this. This is the code of my function. This is the code written in Python, which is actually doing what? It is stopping the instances. Okay, which instance? These instances. So in place of this instance ID, 
I can write the instance ID of the instance which I have created. So this is the instance ID that I want to work with. What is the name of the region with whom I want to work? So I am working in Oregon. The name of the region that I am working is US West 2. So I will write US West 2 over here. So this is the region variable. This is the instance variable. I am calling the function over here where I am stopping the instance. Which instance? The instances which are mentioned in this variable instances. So basically this instance is going to get stopped and this log will be written. So this is the lambda function code which I am going to copy and I will come to my lambda page where I am going to create the function. I will say that I have my code ready. The name of the code is stop instance. The runtime which is required to run this code is Python. So let me take Python 3.9. You can take, uh, you know, uh, 3.11 also. But over here, if you see, the runtime to be selected is 3.9. That's why I'm choosing 3.9. In the reference document which I'm using, they have taken 3.9. Default execution role, the role which will be used to execute this lambda function. So I will use the role as lamb role was the one which I created. So I will use that. Then I will click on create function. See my function got created. There is a permission which is associated with my function. And now on this page, I can mention the code. So I will delete this current code which is there in the code section. And I will paste my code over here. You can see changes not deployed. I will deploy the changes. That means I have saved the lambda function which I created. You can go on the configuration page and can see in the permissions that right now these are the permissions which are given. Some log permissions are there. These are the logs that you can create. Resource based log. And then EC2 instance permissions are also there to start and stop. So write permissions are allocated. The lambda role, lamb role is associated with my code. So my function is ready. Now what will I do? I will now create the trigger. I'll click on add trigger. Because it is a time based trigger. So there is a service in Amazon called Event Bridge. So over here on the Event Bridge, I can either use existing rules if they are created or otherwise I will create a new rule for executing this Lambda function. So I'll click on create the new rule. I will name it as stop rule. Stop the EC2 instance. I am just giving the description. And in this, I need to give the schedule statement when to stop the instance. And this schedule statement has to be written in UTC time zone. So if I see UTC time now, so it is 1.57 in the morning. Okay. It is 1.57 in the morning. So let me decide it as uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, I want the instance to be stopped. So I have to be a little quick if I want to achieve that. So I need to write the cron statement in this format. The one which is written over here. So it basically means that at what, at what minutes, so I said 0 minutes, 2 hours. That is what it is written over here. 
that from Monday to Friday, if I make it star over here, that means every day, every month, every year, whichever is the day of the week, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you need to run this lambda function which we have created. So I added a cron statement over here like this. So that is a trigger. If you want, you can see this event bridge rule also over here. Go to event bridge in the search bar. Come over here. You can see the rules which we created. We created it from the page of Lambda, but you can see it over here. So this is the event bridge rule that we created to stop the EC2 instance. If I click on this, you can see that the rule is enabled. And if you see in the local time zone of mine over here, there will be a trigger at 7.30 a.m. morning. That is now after a minute, the trigger is going to come, which will actually stop my instance. If everything goes fine. So this is how we, are crea we have created a trigger to stop the instance. Similarly, I can create a trigger to start the instance. I just have to write start over here in the code. That's it. Otherwise, the role will be same because the role has got permission to start and to stop the EC2 instance. So you can do the Lambda task in this way. So my instance, which is, let me make it running. Yeah, it's 729 only on my laptop. The instance is running. After a minute, the instance will get stopped. Because I have created a Lambda function, which is having code to stop this particular EC2 instance at a time-based trigger. You can even see the monitoring of this trigger over here. If you click on monitor, you'll be able to see if the function is invoked or not. It takes a little time to get reflected over here. Right now, no data is available. Once the function is invoked, you will be able to see whether it was successful or it was errored. How much duration did it took to get the function executed? How many invocations has occurred at what time? All these things you will be able to see. Once your function is executed, your instance will be stopped. See, I just refreshed the page and my instance is stopped now. Right? Since it has, it has happened automatically at a time because I created a time-based trigger. Well, that was our AWS expert talking about how to create AWS Lambda function using EC2 instance. Now, next task is uh, important thing is you need to implement this. So below this video, there should be instructions or there'll be a link where we'll have a step-by-step -step instructions, including the code on how to do including IAM policies. And I think if time permits, I'm going to give you a, a link to download the step-by-step -step guides so you can follow that and create. Now, if you don't have an AWS account, the steps to create an AWS account instructions should also be there below this video, maybe in the comment section or description section. So create AWS account and then create an AWS function and also EC2 machines. And if you need any help, any other guidance, leave them under comment section as well. Now, also like that, if you need any other things that you want us to cover in this video, put that as well so we can work on and show to you these step-by-step -step, um, recipes or hands-on lab that you want to create. Now, if you enjoyed this and you want to learn, go deeper into, um, I would like to invite you for a free class where we talk about how to get a job in AWS cloud if you're not already working. If you're already working into a cloud, then how to get a high paying job in cloud doing different roles. Now, this is going to be roughly around 90 minute class. Link to that should also be there or it could be 
k20academy.com forward slash able zero two. We are going to talk about give you the complete path, including some of the common mistakes that are keeping you stuck. So check that class as well. That link should be again in the description section. With that, I'm going to. This is Atul from Team K20 Academy, and I'll see you in another video next week. Keep watching and keep learning. Take care and bye for now.